What's up, Otaku fam? We are the Otaku Couple back. More reactions here for the channel with some more Gigguk. We have When You Become the Main Character. I'm already the main character. You're all just B characters. Thank you for the continued support. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and check out our whole playlist of all of our Gigguk reactions. And check out our Patreon link down below for full uncut reacting to TV shows, animes, and movies. Currently reacting to Windbreaker and Free Rant over there, so some current shows and Demon Slayer as it comes out every week. You know, it's a good time. Fully uncut, more content for y'all. A little bit of money for us so that we can focus on the content creation and not our awful full-time jobs. But thank you guys, regardless, for the continued support. Let's hop on in. This is going to be something special. For the longest time, anime fans had this rabid obsession with media that came from Japan and only Japan. Animation not made from the motherland? What do I look like? A cartoon fan? Reading pictures left to right? That's not how you read manga. Then, Korean webtoons blasted onto the scene, quickly carving its own niche in the international community. I actually Korean like teams, webtoons. Looks like a duck, walks like a duck, but quacks like... We'll give it a pass. This opened the world to a whole new genre of... Even more power fantasy stories with an OP main character. If you were bored of Isekai, no worries, just jump over to Korea, where we have regression, reincarnation, tower climbing, and death games. Where reading through all these allows you to get more brain rot than being a part of the Jujutsu Kaisen fanbase. But what if there was a series that takes all these elements from every one of these series you can think of, blends it all together for an unabashed love letter not only for these genres, but for fiction itself? I love what I'm being shady -ish. I'm being shady -ish. A series that combines a meta take on every power fantasy. Oh you can think of Hunter Hunter style exams, Battle Royale death games, legendary historical figures from the past, cosmic deities from all global mythology, interdimensional eldritch horrors that haunt your nightmares, and finally, Twitch streamers. And this, Hell yeah. Here for it. I'm sold. This is one of the most important aspects of it. I'm being shady. So grab your popcorn, <laughs> oh, no. fasten that seatbelt, hang on to your knickers. Because today we're talking about Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. But before we get to that, let me go back to my roots for a bit and talk about Isekai, because one of my favorite Isekai is having a collaboration with today's sponsor, AFK Arena. AFK Arena is a strategy-based mobile game, and they're working with Tenshiro in order AFK. to bring their fun gameplay and stellar art style to the well, world. Kudos to that. King Doctor is a nobody. An average office worker graduating from an average college, living an average life as a loner, whose only hobby is reading trashy fantasy novels that absolutely no one else reads. Insert the fucking Denji panel here. One such novel is <laughs> he just like me three for ways real. to survive the apocalypse. A web novel with over 3,000 chapters. One Piece fans quake at this man's dedication, except the series is so underground and gone on for so long that the only one viewing it? person still reading it. And it remains that- <laughs> Bro. What? <laughs> Can you imagine it's opening up a webtoon app or Shonen Jump app, whatever you, wherever you decide to read your manga from, and your and your man was, and you're you're the only one reading it, mm -mm. bro. That way, as he loads up the final chapter and becomes the sole person to reach the end of this novel that he's been following for over a decade, the lights go dark. <laughs> the train is on, crashes. Everyone's screaming. <laughs> And Doctor begins to realize that the story of his novel has suddenly become a reality. Monsters spawn in the real world. Everyone is forced into a series of death games where these little munchkins set all the rules. The apocalypse has started. I say cry. To help everyone get through the games, everyone is given an ability. And for Doctor, of course, he is given a pirated copy of the entire web novel and the ability to read at super fast speeds. Yes, his anime superpower is reading fast. He may not be able to be Gojo, but he <laughs> nah, can't read. Tyson fan. <laughs> IQ, armed with the knowledge of the ensuing apocalypse that he and only he knows the entire story of, Doctor realizes, oh my god, I can now be the single most obnoxious light novel reader that's ever existed. <clears throat> stories within stories. As a plot hook, I am an absolute sucker for. Maybe it's because I've made watching stories become my job, but when you watch enough right. anime, you start to see all the repeated tropes, all the reoccurring cliches. Sometimes you start Facts. to wonder how you do differently than how the story plays out. Right. The series plays to that fantasy to a T, as Dolce lives the story of his you already, you already sold me, man. events as he <laughs> sees fit. You ever watch a movie or TV show and thought to yourself, man, I could solve everyone's problem if I just did this, Doctor does that. <laughs> or maybe there's a major character you absolutely despise, but just keeps showing up and you're like, man, 
Fuck this cum stained mouth breathing piece of shit. Can we just remove him from the story already? He has to go, blood. Doctor does that. Are you one of oh. those people who watch videos like How to Beat Every Game in Squid Game or How to Beat no. the Monster from a Quiet Place? Doctor no. probably made those bloody videos because he thinks he can do a better job. Doctor uh. is your average Redditor. The world oh. of the three ways to survive the apocalypse doesn't just come alive. The very characters that inhabit the story become a reality, allowing him to game the system, befriend the characters he knows oh so well, making him only slightly less parasocial than your average K-pop fan, and molds <laughs> the story in the way he would have gone through the original novel. All right, I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of you are probably gonna see these panels and read some early chapters and go, this is just more solo leveling. Let's go down the checklist. Leveling up system, video game esque abilities and interface, death games with different clear conditions. A protagonist that is OP because he has prior knowledge of the events that are about to unfold. If this was a manhwa trope exam, it'd be scoring A plus in power fantasy brain rot. But the series takes these cliches you are familiar with and uses it as a springboard to run in all sorts of interesting directions. Cults start to form with a ranking system based on how far people got in the original novels. They fight an isekai protagonist and he almost wipes the floor with them because he's so OP. Doctor meets the actual main character of the original novels and he's oh. everything you'd expect. He's cool, calm, good looking, ruthless, perfect on the surface in so he's every way. <laughs> when this motherfucker pisses, it's probably in laminar flow. But it turns out from the perspective of someone who's not a named character in the original story, it's kind of a dick. He's ridiculously powerful because he's a regressor who can respawn at the beginning of the story every time he dies. Oh. Hey, by regression, man, we're here if you can't remember. But what that means is that he's become... We reacted to that video. You should go check it out in the playlist of our kick reactions in the channel. This nihilistic arsehole who doesn't care for anyone who can't help him progress further than the last run. And he gives up on the world at the slightest unforeseen obstacle because, well... What's the point when he can just start all over again? To the point where he gets depression from the disconnect he feels with the world. So, after hearing this, Doctor slaps the shit out of him, goes hashtag not my protagonist and tells him, bro, can we just skip the emo character arc this time? Yeah, the series is meta as hell. And here's the thing, <laughs> meta anime is something I have a soft spot for, but only in those rare cases that the author actually takes the effort to make something interesting out of it. Yes. Most of the time, you just yes. see a quick fourth wall break or a self-referential joke. <laughs> John Luke, you didn't fall on my panties for once. At best, it's like a funny Easter egg, but at worst, it feels like a cheap gimmick. Now go a layer down and you see something like Bakuman or Shirabako. Stories about creating stories, where you can learn something but still be invested in the plot of these creators themselves. Then you have your One Punch Mans and Eminence and Shadows, series that not only plays to its tropes, but embraces everything the genre is about to craft a genuinely entertaining story and world self-contained from anything that it's satirizing. Now, if yeah. I were to scale omniscient readers' viewpoint against shows like like these, it would land somewhere about here. This series takes the meta narrative and explores it in a depth that I don't think I've ever seen before. With so many wild ideas, I don't even know where to start. Take one of Doctor's most iconic abilities the fourth wall. On the surface, the fourth wall seems like your standard OP ability that, hey, is a reference to the fourth wall. <laughs> oh my god, so meta. A power that protects him from shit seemingly no one else in this story is able to block. It stops even the most powerful, unblockable mental attacks. It shields him from the pain of any injury. It can dampen his emotions to allow him to distance himself from some of the most horrific events he witnesses in the world. It's so powerful that even the Doc Hibby, the little creatures that are meant to be running everything, aren't able to bypass fourth wall's protection. Oh. Yeah, pretty damn broken. But as he continues to encounter different situations, stuff that never happened in the way they did in the original novel, things start to get weird. He encounters his old bully from his real past and the wall starts glitching a bit. He meets someone that plays a part in some big traumatic event that happened to him before and it shakes violently. It resonates with character moments that meant something to him in the original story and the more the ability begins to act out, the more you begin to realize the fourth wall is his fourth wall. The one that separates and protects him from the rules of his perception of this fictional world. But as the world of fantasy and his reality start to blend together, you see the cracks beginning to form. The fourth wall can't protect him from the real struggles of his life outside of fiction. Oh. And that's just fucking cool for a concept, while being so on point for the theme of the story, because this is a story about stories. Not just the power of a story, but the relationship between an author, the reader, and the story being told. And to do this, it has crafted this insane, intricate world with a system that all comes back to this central idea. Okay, pause for a second. 
You're probably confused as to why I mentioned live streamers in the intro and how that has anything to do with this story. Well, turns out everything is being live streamed to this cosmic Twitch for the enjoyment of constellations. What are constellations? <laughs> well, that's what? the name for all these deities or historical figures that are watching the live stream. Because, you know, when you're a god, apparently you have nothing better to do than just to watch a subathon run by some celestial Mr. Beast. And I'm not talking <laughs> about some made up fake characters. Greek gods and goddesses, Archangel Uriel, Christopher Columbus, these are actual figures from our own history and mythology. If I had to make a comparison... So we're gonna add a record of Ragnarok into this. Okay, That's gonna be cool. interesting. I'd say it's kind of reminiscent of... Drifters. But instead of summoning <laughs> these heroic spirits to Earth to battle it out, like in... Drifters, they can shower uh -huh. their favorite contestants with subs and donos so they can use the in-game currency Bro. to buy better wow. equipment and resources. It goes so far that people can bargain exclusive what? stream and sponsor so it's like contracts Hunger Games allow too. contestants to inherit special abilities of whatever constellation they're in a contract with. Oh, Why Lord. is this even relevant? Stories. The power of a story is the power system in this world, whether it be these constellations wanting to sponsor someone so they can have their story represented, or someone building a powerful story themselves to get recognized by all these celestial beings. And your abilities are tied to the power of the stories you create, or the stories you choose to take on. And that's the thing. Everyone has a story. Uh, yeah, what she said. I went to the convenience store today because I was craving fried chicken. They were out. That's a story, not a powerful one, unless of course you know the pain of being deprived delicious Lawson's fried chicken. What is it that makes a good story? How do you craft something that will resonate deeply with an audience? And what if your strength was correlated to the strength of your own personal story? Will your story include some grand historical feat, an epic sea battle, or will it become the stuff of legends, passed down through generations, eventually transforming into something mythical? It's a system based on anything and everything you've ever seen in fiction. And if that's not one of the coolest concepts for a power system you've ever heard of, I don't know. Go back to doing sign language with Naruto or some shit. <laughs> now I've just spent over 11 minutes. Thank you, Alan. Trying to convince you that Omniscient Reader is different. <laughs> it's not like other power fantasy manhwa. And I'm here to tell you, it's not for a very long time. Credit where credit is due. Doctor is far more likable than your typical bland, self-insert, overpowered protagonist. He has great chemistry with the various cast members, but for a very long stretch of the series, it tries to present you with the idea that he's just an ordinary dude, an underdog, overshadowed by the actual protagonist of the novel. He's just like you for real. Yet we can clearly see that he's really smart, charismatic, a natural leader who knows the solution to every problem no matter what the scenarios throw at him. One of the running jokes to keep him grounded is that everyone thinks he's just really ugly and bro, if this dude is meant to be ugly, I might as well commit Alt F4 in my life right now because what fucking hope do I have? It takes quite a bit of commitment before the series even starts to show its hand. We are 200 odd chapters in right now. Well, and maybe that's a translation. Maybe he's meant to be looking put in to be interesting plain situations looking that or challenge something. their worldview or had bombshell revelations that give us an insight behind what makes these characters tick. And yet, all this time, I feel like we are just at the start. This is a series based on a completed web novel with 551 chapters, and we are just about a third of the way through of the story and have yet to fully get into the meat of it. Every wow. novel reader I've seen has said it only continues to get better, wilder, paying off all the characters and systems to elevate it to a whole new level. And while the last thing I want to do is make smug novel readers feel more superior than they already do, the series has shown enough shades of greatness, set the foundation for so many interesting things that I'm actually inclined to believe them. But as for right now, to me, Omniscient Reader's viewpoint has just been the ultimate love letter for the genre I can't seem to get away Away from an amalgamation of all your isekais, regressions, death games, power fantasy stories that so many people write off, but with a drive to try and do so much more. And if you have the patience, my gut is telling me that we're witnessing a series that is about to evolve into something truly special. Or I'm wrong, and we just get cool OP man kicking ass with fantastic art and cool action. <laughs> That's win win in my books. Right. <laughs> I promise this isn't a mama only channel now, probably. I'm here for it. Hey. As much as I, you know, I love mama as much as the next guy, but we do use Gigguk for a lot of our anime reactions, mm -hmm. you know, for, for adding onto our list of things that we need to react to. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you gotta be both. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. It is. It is. Let's see how hard it is to find that. I'd read it. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, oh. I'm so close. Oh. I did, okay. Oh, there okay. you go. It wasn't We're that safe. bad. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> We're safe. Too much hair.
Well, guys, let us know down below if you're interested in what he just talked about in this series. Or if you've read it already, let us know if it's good. And we'll see you guys for the next video. Bye.